want to bring a word today, a Thanksgiving message. And I don't know why it is every year, I've uh, been ministering now since 1985. Uh, I don't know how many years that's cl- getting on, 40 years. And then every Thanksgiving, it's like, okay, Lord, show me how to, a new way to bring about this message. And the Holy Spirit says, just stick to my word. So we're going to Psalm 100 today. Psalm 100, and we're going to go to verses 4 and 5. And this is a Thanksgiving psalm, and we're going to, if they'll put that on the screen for us, we'd appreciate that so much. Psalm 100, that's all right, we'll go back and use our Bible. All right? Psalm 100. How many got your Bible today? Amen. Hey, bring your Bible, okay? When I was a kid growing up, we used to do sword drills. How many remember that? When you get, yep. Basically, this is your sword, and you got to know where things are. So they'd say, Amos 110 or whatever, and you'd have to find it. So, Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5. Here's what we're going to do we're going to go right to the scripture, and here's what the word says Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Let that soak in just a minute. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's look at verse 4, the beginning of that again, and it says, Enter his gates. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. A lot of times we, this was an old chorus we used to sing. How remember that one? I will enter. Any of you remember that one? Yeah. And sometimes we'd sing it and everybody, we'd just be looking around. No. A key word is enter. How do you enter? So I'm going to talk to you today about the Thanksgiving key, the Thanksgiving key. Lord, bless this word today, and we praise you for these wonderful people that are here today. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I bring the message today, let me just say to you that uh, today a lot of churches from the area are going to be coming to Glad Tidings to drop off their shoeboxes. If you have the spirit of volunteerism and want to help, uh, we have trucks to load today. Archie and Gwen would certainly appreciate that. And uh, so it's a big day. They're going to be doing decorating in here today for Christmas. Uh, Friendsgiving tonight. It's a busy time. And we just thank God uh, that the Lord is doing so many wonderful things. There's probably going to be, I don't know how many, probably 15, 20,000 boxes that will go through this church uh, in the next several days. And so thank God that we're reaching the world for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Thanksgiving. You can complain about the price of turkeys being higher this year or the oil that you bought to fry your turkey costs more than the turkey itself. Thanksgiving has a history. It goes back to around the 1600s where the colonists and the Wampanoag tribe, they gathered together to give thanks. A lot of the colonies had days of Thanksgiving. And then around 18, I believe 63, Abraham Lincoln proclaimed a day of thanksgiving. But I want to tell you that thanksgiving is not just a day. Thanksgiving is a lifestyle for those who know Jesus Christ. It's not just a holiday to enjoy. It's a lifestyle that we employ. And so it's not just thanksgiving, it's thanks living. Turn to your neighbor and say, I've got to practice thanks living. Do that. 
So today I want to talk to you about the Thanksgiving Code. Now, on the church, right by the office, there is a code that we use to get into the building. And I don't know why, but it's just four digits, and we've changed the code several times. We do that for security reasons, but the, I, sometimes I just cannot remember the code. And so I'm outside of the church, and I have to knock and look in, and I thought to myself, isn't it a shame they locked the pass? And so I want you to understand that if you are a person who loves Jesus with all of your heart, God wants you to live in thanksgiving. And so I want us to examine this key. We know in the natural, just being grateful, it helps us physically. It helps us mentally. I was looking at some statistics this week. In, nat in the natural, well, so far as your life is concerned, You'll live 10 years longer if you are a thankful and grateful person. It lowers the risk of heart disease by 25%. Also, you're going to sleep better when you're thankful. 10% less pain when you're thankful. Thanksgiving ushers you in to the powerful presence of God and an overcoming life. So I want us today, just for a few moments, before we celebrate communion and before we celebrate salvation with baptism, I want to give you the, the key of thanksgiving. And so I want you to know the first one is this. Get this. This is Psalm 100. This was the text. The key to entering God's presence is thanksgiving. The key to entering God's presence is thanksgiving. Why is that important? Because the Bible speaks in the tabernacle, the temple area, there was a progression into worship. The Bible says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. There were actual gates. And they opened those gates. And the psalmist said, I was glad when they said to me, let's go in the house of the Lord. But there were gates that they had to open. So when he went to the very gate, he's not even in the holy place or the most holy place, the 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 priest hadn't even gotten there yet, but he said, as a worshiper, I'm going to start praising God right here. Before I even enter into the place, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to be a person of thanksgiving. So the gates are open. And then you go into the courts. And then there was the court of the Gentiles, and we're thankful. And then there's the burnt altar, and then there's the holy place with the table of showbread. And then there's the, the lampstand and the altar of incense, and there's a progression. And then the priest would go into the holy of holies. But he says, I'm not waiting until he brings that blood into the place of the most holy place. I'm going to start right here in the very beginning and give God thanks. Listen, you've got to get this principle for your life, and that is you must be a person of thanksgiving to enter into God's presence. It's your ticket in. Many years ago, I went to the Peach Bowl when they had it in Atlanta, Georgia at the old, uh, I think it's Three County Stadium, tell you how old I am. And I went with several guys from the church. Derwood Vinson was one of them. Pastor Terry was there. And, and, and Stevie Campbell, the Steve and Terry, going to be with the Lord now. And I remember one of the guys lost his ticket. And we felt so sorry for him. But we were certainly glad we had ours. <laughs> but we weren't going to sit in a vehicle with him and just sulk with him. And they said, just go on in. But I remember his face when he said, I found my ticket. And I was able to come in. Listen, thanksgiving is your ticket in. Being thankful for God entering into His presence. This is important for you to remember. That's why we start this service with thanksgiving. 
That's why we, we praise the Lord. That's why we're jubilant up front. That's why, that's why we have music and instruments. The psalmist said, praise Him with the cymbals and, and praise Him with the stringed instruments and pra- praise Him upon uh, the flute and, and the harp and the lyre. Praise Him uh, with and the, so the guitars and all of these types of things. And so we give God praise and you've got to understand, if you want to get in the presence of God, you've got to start first with thanking Him and praising Him. A lot of people may say, well, Pastor, we know all this stuff. Well, if that were so, we'd have a move of God in our nation today. So it's important, instead of all the things that are going to discourage you and trouble you and what is and what could be and what might be, I don't know about you, but the enemy tries to use what could be, what might be against me. Everybody's got a, an area that the enemy tries to come against them. And I'll, I'll get in a conversation with Miss Kathy. And Miss Kathy will say, will you please? You are borrowing trouble and you don't even know what these things are yet. Turn your name and say, he's preaching about you now. And here's what we've got to understand. I'm actually hindering the presence of God and the peace of God in my life because I'm letting those things dominate my thoughts rather than thanksgiving. It is a choice. I choose to look away from the irritant of the day and look to God's Word and what He said, and I will enter His gates. At the very beginning of this day, I'm going to bless the Lord. Before I go into my office, before I open the door, I'm going to bless the Lord. Before I crank up my car, I'm going to bless the Lord. Before I go into this store, I'm going to bless the Lord. Before I come home to my family, I'm going to bless the Lord. Before I go to the bank or wherever I pay my bills, I'm going to bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. It's the key. It's the way you should live your life. To go into God's presence, we thank Him. Philippians chapter 4 and verses 6 and 7 says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything. By prayer and petition with what? We miss that little clause with thanksgiving. Because most of the time we go in, oh, it's been terrible. Listen, you got to learn that thanksgiving is the key. When you go to school or you go to college, when I went to college, I noticed I I was in the dorm and I just just so happened that I was on the hall with, with several seniors and they were taking 400 and 500 level classes. And I'm just taking Psych 101. And it took me a while to get to the 400 level. But I want you to understand that you don't go and go to college one day and get a degree. So the deal is that you've got to understand that if you're going to live for Jesus and mature in Jesus, the very first thing is to be thankful. Be thankful for what... I'm praying that some of this will click in your spirit because God wants to change your mindset. So I'm going to enter His gates with thanksgiving, His courts with praise. Thanksgiving is first. That's the key to getting in. That's your ticket in. So I'm going to be a thankful person and I'm going to give the Lord praise. That's the first thing. Somebody say, that's my ticket in. That was weak. Thanksgiving is my ticket in. Say it with me. Thanksgiving is my ticket in. I'm going to go in with praise. I'm going to go in with thanksgiving. Watch how things will change around you because that is really the second point that I want to make, and that is the key to changing the spiritual atmosphere or the changing the atmosphere in your life, in your home, is thanksgiving. If, if, if it's for the presence of God and you do that first, then God's presence is going to be welcome. So, therefore, the spiritual atmosphere in your life is going to be changed. It's going to be changed in your home because you are saying, Lord, 
I give you full authority of this place in my mind and my spirit. Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2 says, I praise the Lord. And the, uh, King James says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and let all that is within me bless his most holy name. And so he says, All my inmost being. And then he goes and starts a list of all the things that he's thankful for. He says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. He heals me, he blesses me, he provides for me. And, and we're thankful for all of those things that God does. And so when we begin to praise the Lord, the atmosphere begins to change. And so this is a part of maturity. This is something that, that I'm having to do and have done for a long period of time. Whenever you're discouraged or there's doubt or there's problems, it can be so heavy on your mind. Am I I'm talking to some of you here today? And you would say, pa you say, Pastor, you know, that day I just didn't feel like doing anything. But I, And you know what? Sometimes you have to get up and you have to go by faith. And you say, God, you're the Lord of this day, and I'm going to trust you. And, you. and when you begin to do that, God begins to work in your situation. The atmosphere begins to change because you're moving forward in faith and believing that God can do what you cannot do. And here's the issue. Some people just go to God in trouble. And they bring a, bring a big, long shopping list of things that they want to do. Ah, oh, I, I got to go talk to the Lord. Okay, Lord, uh, this is what's going on. This is my problem. This is the issue. I've got this bill at the hospital. I've got all these things. Uh, my, my kids got to have braces. Uh, you know, I, I got all these types of things that are happening in my life. I don't know what's going to take place. I'm, I'm moving. Lord, please help me. You know, I'm just doing. And so we go in worried. God knows your need, but here's my question. What is the key to getting in to the gate? Thanksgiving. It is the progression. It changes the spiritual atmosphere. So if you will go in praise, you will see God doing something wonderful. And how many, if, how many people are people in your life, and the only time they ever call you if there's something wrong? And, uh, you know, a lot of times you think, well, Lord, I'd just like to talk with them and, and just be a friend to them. There, there's some people in, in the church, and, you know, uh, uh, Dean Putnam, uh, sometimes he'll call me and he'll say, Pastor, let's go eat lunch. And he'll say, we're not going to talk about church. We're just going to go and be, be brothers in Christ today. I said, well, hallelujah. <laughs> Usually some of the... Pastor, can we go to lunch today? <laughs> oh, boy. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody calls you, can we meet? Okay. So here's what you've got to understand. And that is being thankful changes the spiritual atmosphere. Being Showing what God has done makes a difference. And so when we go into the presence of the Lord... We don't just go there when we've got trouble. In fact, we need to go to God more because He is good and we can thank Him and praise Him. And on, as I said, on your worst day, God has been good to you. So go with thanksgiving. It changes the spiritual atmosphere. Thank Him for your home. Thank Him for your wife. Thank Him for your wife. Thank Him for your husband. Thank Him for your husband. You start thanking God, things might change in your marriage. What is it? I will enter with what? Thanksgiving. There are some people who don't even have a relationship. Some people, their husband is not even in the home. Thank God for where you are today. Give Him praise for what He's done. And so instead of a job list 
or your bank account statement or who will be offended or your debts. Exalt Him and the gates will open and the atmosphere of change. And if you need a change in your atmosphere, then start giving God thanks for what He's done. He's worthy of your praise today. I know that you're going through stuff, but God is good and He will bring you through it. Paul taught this in his epistles. Romans chapter 1. He said, first, I thank God through Jesus Christ for all of you. He starts with thanksgiving. In Ephesus 1.16, the very first chapter, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Philippians chapter 1, I thank God every time I remember you. Colossians, we thank God when we pray for you. There it is. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. This is not just something that looks good on paper and sounds good on a sermon. This is what we do. This is how believers live. We are a thankful people. People, and as the old hymn said, come ye thankful people, come. We've got a lot to be thankful for today. There was a man named John Hyde. He was a prayer warrior. He went to be a missionary, but God called him to be a person of prayer. And so when he prayed, he would pray for the situation. He said there was a person that was working with him that was just not sharp when it came to helping others and he was kind of cold in his personality and he he said this man is very ineffective but the holy spirit stopped him and said why don't you give thanks for the fact that he's here and maybe he's willing to learn start start praising me for this man start thanking god for what he can do in his life and he began to pray and thank god and this man became a flaming witness for jesus christ See, what you're doing is that you are changing the spiritual atmosphere. You are really inviting God to come in there. What does the Word say? That He inhabits the what of His people? He inhabits the praises of His people. So when you thank God, you're saying, here's an invitation, Jesus. Come on in. So we're thanking Him. And so therefore, we want to change the spiritual atmosphere. Be thankful. Third thing. The key to God's power at work in your life is thanksgiving. How do we get that, Pastor? Let's go to the Old Testament and look at the book of Jonah. Jonah did not want to go to the city of Nineveh and minister. He said, there are a group of heathen people, and I'm not going there. Uh, Lord, I don't want to go there. And he got on the ship, and we know the story. And, and uh, the storm came, and he said, I'm the problem. So they threw him overboard, and a, and a, a giant fish uh, that was prepared by God uh, swallowed him. And it was in the belly of that fish that he began to cry out to God. Now, if you look at chapter 2, and you can study this a little bit later, Jonah's talking about how bad it is and how, how it's difficult and how, you know, how this is bad. And, but notice in verse 9, he said something that changed the situation. He said in verse 9, from the belly of the well, he said, But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of what? Come on, with the voice of what? He said, I'm going to praise you. I'm going with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. In other words, I'm going to do what I have said. I'm going to do. I'm going to worship you. And I'm going to thank you, Lord. Now, if you look at Jonah chapter 2 and verse 9, the following verse says this. Then the fish expelled him out of its mouth. Do you understand that thanksgiving and worship to God was the key to him getting free? God set him free. He went to Nineveh. The entire place uh, was, was, came to the Lord. They repented. God used him mightily. But you've got to understand that God had to get him to the place where he was a person of thanksgiving. And so the key to God's power at work in your life is thanksgiving. Jesus gave us the example for great things to be accomplished. Before the feeding of the 5,000, what did Jesus do with those that loaves and fish? He lifted them up to the Lord and He gave what? Before Lazarus was raised from the dead, he stood and what did he give thanks to? He gave thanks to God. And so therefore, 
we see it. The, the apostles, Jesus, the Old Testament writers, they're giving us the key to having an overcoming life, and it is we're going to be thankful people. And if you want God's power to be at work in your life, then you need to be thankful. If you want God to change your home, be thankful for your home. If you want God to change your children, be thankful for your children. You say, well, Lord, they're, they're drunk and messed up and, and they're uh, living in this situation, but you know what? They're still alive and they, there's potential for God to save them and bless them and use them for the kingdom of God. And if you'd start thanking God for your kids, something might happen in the Spirit in their lives. Oh, I'm preaching more than you're letting on today. We're dating this fella and he's Ain't no good. Well, I heard things about her. I know where she comes from. If you would get that out of your thinking and start saying, Lord, I gave my children to you when they were born. And I give them to you right now. And I want to thank you for what. Thank you, Lord. They're going to serve you. They're going to love you. Thank you to the Holy Spirit. Seeing what you're doing, you're releasing the power of God to be at work in their life. Some of you are hindering the work of God because of your negativity and you're not thanking the Lord for the fact that He is Lord over all things. Start praising God and watch Him work in your situation. That's why we're going to enter the gates with thanksgiving. Thank Him for your job. Thank Him for your home, all of the things. Thank Him for that car. Thank Him for that heating and air conditioning unit. Pastor, that's so true. No, it is not. If the Lord is concerned about a sparrow that falls, He's concerned about everything that happens in your life. So thank Him. Fourthly and finally, the key to personal renewal is thanksgiving. Luke chapter 17, you know the story. There were ten lepers. And lepers in this day, leprosy, and of course we know now that it is an autoimmune disease. And it affected their skin. There were sores all over their body. And whenever the lepers were in your presence or came close to you, they'd have to cry out, unclean, unclean. And they were ostracized from society. But notice, Jesus is not afraid of them. And they stood at a distance and they called out to Jesus and they said, have mercy on us. And Jesus looked at those lepers, the ten of them, and he said, all right, go show yourself to the priests. And it was when they turned and started going toward the priest. In other words, the priest had to approve of you. He had to look at those sores and pronounce you clean or unclean. And so they're, they're saying, well, we're, we, we've got a bad situation right now. But the Bible says as they went, as they obeyed the word of the Lord, as they went, they were healed. Now, notice that they're excited. They're going to show themselves to the priest. But the Bible says that one of them returned only one of them returned you know what out of i don't know if this is across the board but you may have done things for people let me help you a little bit you may help some people but if you're waiting for a thank you from them you might be waiting a long time why don't you do it for the glory of the lord oh i i'm telling you well i've helped them i've loaned them money given them this and helped them that. i mean <laughs> Stop it. You did it for Jesus. You did it for Him. And the Bible says if you lend to the poor, God repay you. He will pay you back with interest. And so here's what's happening. This man comes back. And this man, the Bible says that when he came back, he returned and he began to praise the Lord. Verse 16 and he threw himself at the feet of Jesus. And he did what? He thanked him. And the Bible says this. He was a Samaritan. 
Do you know that it's possible that all of the others were Jewish uh, lepers? And it's interesting that leprosy had no barriers. It crossed all nationalities. It crossed all backgrounds. And, and so this Samaritan was, uh, Samaritans were outcast when it, it came to understanding what the, the Jewish understanding of Scripture. They didn't want anything to do with Samaritans. But this Samaritan saw he was cleansed and he comes back to Jesus and he is thanking the Lord and he's giving the Lord praise. That tells me sometimes the people that you think will least receive what you're doing for them, some of those people are the most grateful people. Now I want you to understand what would be like for you if you had leprosy. Robert Morris, I was listening to something that he talked about in this particular passage. And he says, he gives a list of some things that if you had leprosy in this day and you were under the same laws as they were, you could not be a productive member of society. You couldn't hold a job because sometimes it would eat away at your fingers and Sometimes your fingers would be like little nubs and you, you couldn't do specific tasks. You couldn't go to church. Why? Because you were diseased and you had to stay apart from the people. You couldn't live with your family. Some of you might think, well, praise God, it's a blessing, right? No. I, I tell you, when, when my, I'm alone in my house, I'm, I'm man, where's, where's my wife? And those two dogs drive me nuts. But I, I'm thankful for my family. And this week, man, the house is going to be full. We're going to have, have children and, 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 and a baby. And praise God, going to be under my roof. You couldn't hug your children. You couldn't go to their ball games. You couldn't kiss your wife or husband. If anyone were too close to you, you had to shout unclean. You were a physical, social, and religious outcast. But I want you to understand what happened with this man in chapter 17 and verse 19. When this man came back, Jesus said, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? They didn't come back to give thanks. But I want you to understand that something happened in this man. Jesus told this man in chapter 17, verse 19, He said, Rise and go in faith because your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. And I began to look at this passage of Scripture, and I thought many times, well, the other guys were well too. But you've got to understand something. Jesus is saying something. The word for healing in the Greek is eomai. But I want you to understand Jesus uses a different word for this man who comes back to him. He says, your faith has made you sozo. The word sozo in the Greek is where we get the word salvation. I want you to understand something. The other people might have gotten their healing, but this man got his healing and his salvation, and he was restored to God. And I want you to understand that thankfulness, being thankful to God, opened the key for personal revival. If you want personal revival in your life, you've got to make sure that you're a person of thanksgiving. It brings you into proper relationship with God. That's why we enter His gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. That's why the atmosphere is changed. That's why God's power begins to work in your life. That's how you can have personal revival. I want you to understand that we had something more more detrimental than leprosy. Every person in this room, you've had a sin condition. And just as a leper had numbness, he could not feel in his extremities, what was happening? I heard a story of one man who was a leper, and 
that he was trying to use a shovel, just wrap the core of his hand around a shovel, but there was a, a sharp a splinter or nail in that, and it was tearing his flesh, but he didn't even know it because he was numb to it. I want to tell you something. Your conscience was seared, and you didn't even know what was happening to you. But I want to tell you, the Lord has set you free, and He's made you alive in Christ, and now you can sense the presence of God in your life, and He's worthy to be praised today. And I want to tell you that the Lord has healed you. Thanks be to God who now gives us the victory. We can sense His presence. Just as leprosy was a slow death, our wages of sin, they were death. But Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, He has made us alive in Christ just as leprosy couldn't be hidden. Our sin, it affects our entire being. That's what's the, the problem with our world. Sin is rampant and it cannot be hidden. It affects our mind, our choices. But the Bible says, though your sin be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Just as the lepers were outcast, and we were outcast, and we were outside of the family of God. But I'm thankful today that He has brought me near to the kingdom of His dear Son. I'm accepted in the Beloved. God healed me. God blessed me. But not only did God do some healing in my life, but He set me free, and He made me right with God. You can have all of the blessings in life. But the greatest thing that you've got today is that you've made right with the Heavenly Father and the blood has been applied to the mercy seat. And you've got a relationship with Him that hell cannot break apart today. Be thankful that the Lord has set you free and from a sin and from your disease today. So that's why I'm going to do this. I'm going to enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I'm going to, the very first thing, you may get home and the phone will ring. And it may be some bad news. But you just need to say, God, I thank you that you are in control. See, the enemy doesn't want you to be a person of thanksgiving. But you've got to enter his gates with thanksgiving. The atmosphere will change for you. God's power will be released. God moves in when thanksgiving is present. You want personal revival in your life? Begin to thank God. The Lord says, that's my child. They worship me. They thank me. And watch what God will do in your life. That's the thanksgiving key. It's not just about one day where we can have turkey and dressing and collards and sweet potato casserole with the marshmallows and the pecans on top. Pecans for some of you who are in the south. Whatever you have. I'm going to have all this stuff on my table and we're going to watch football, the Detroit Lions and the Dallas Cowboys and then we're going to, we're going to sit around because we're all sleeping from the turkey. If that's all thanksgiving means to you, you've missed it. For a believer, thanksgiving is every day. My God is good yesterday, today, and forever. My God is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter His courts with praise. I'll say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. If you're thankful, I want you to give Him your best praise today. Come on and bless Him. Glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.